Hello again everyone and welcome back to the underground. So today I wanted to offer a quick update on the situation in Afghanistan as we see it. Uh, right now obviously the situation is very fluid. Uh, things are changing by the minute so you, chances are by the time this video even gets out things will have changed quite significantly most likely. However I did want to throw together some slides really quickly and show what the situation is on the ground from a strategic level all the way down to what is happening on the ground level uh, as best we can. Now some things we cannot talk about but we will do the best that we can to get the information out there for those of you who uh, have not been following what's going on. So let's start right with the top right at the strategic level with the political situation. So as one might expect, the situation has gotten quite uh, intense in, in the White House uh, as over the past few days. Um, the situation is, is not good, uh, clearly, and a lot of American people are looking to the White House, the, the voice of international diplomacy for the United States, uh, for some sort of guidance or, or any, re, uh, any leadership, really. And that's not really happening at the moment. So there's a lot of um, internal conflict right now within the United States political system, which is compounding things overseas, uh, particularly when we get to what units are actually, going, or are actually being allowed to do on the ground as well. Uh, also, uh, as of a couple of days ago, it's it's come out, it's become public knowledge that the State Department uh, is charging uh, or planning to charge uh, American citizens up to $2,000 per person to be evacuated from the country. Um, now, this is not a new policy. This has been around for a very long time, uh, but it, it looks bad. It, it looks very, very, very bad because Americans are now asking, wait a minute, where's our tax money going? Uh, you're freely flying in, you know, immigrants from the U.S. southern border, and, and they're not. You're not charging them a dime, but you're charging American citizens uh, who are over there at the behest of the U.S. government. Uh, you're charging them uh, money to, you know, exfil them from the situation. Doesn't really look good, and again, points to the internal conflict of the United States government. Uh, also, we're having international concerns as well. Uh, China has openly and directly threatened Taiwan with an invasion. Uh, due to the U.S. "quote unquote" abandoning China, which is, or sorry, abandoning Afghanistan, which is China's words. Whether or not that's true remains to be seen. Most likely, this is just political, you know, uh, wordplay and things like that. It's just posturing. China's really good at taking advantage of uh, a weakness in the United States to make themselves stronger. So this was to be expected, and it's I would not necessarily classify it as a uh, a serious threat at this time. Uh, however, I would fully expect to see a lot of um, uh, Chinese aircraft to uh, fly into Taiwan's air defense zone, uh, which is usually it usually is what China does in situations like this. So be be on the lookout for that. Uh, it doesn't mean the war is going to kick off between you know Taiwan and China uh, any day now, but it does mean that the situation is tense. Uh, this Afghanistan situation reaches far beyond the borders of that beleaguered nation, as we're finding out right now. Uh, also, pointing to the uh, the recent um, woes within the United States military, these are coming to a head right now. Um, General Milley uh, has claimed he he is going with the "I nobody told me, I didn't know" excuse, uh, which is a uh, basically he is saying that he, there's no way that any of us knew that the uh, the uh, Afghan National Army and the Afghan government would collapse as quick as it did. And this is an absolute and uh, complete lie. Uh, every, anyone who has ever been to Afghanistan knows that this is a complete BS. Uh, and many, 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 many documents are coming out right now that confirm what literally every human being on the planet knew, which was that the ANA was incapable of even basic defense against, against the Taliban. So there you go. Um, politicians in uniform, a.k.a. our senior United States military leadership, uh, getting caught up in their own words yet again is coming to coming to fruition. And also, getting into the to lower level stuff, uh, the Taliban has already begun breaking their promises. Um, the general attitude in the beginning, uh, a few days ago when this all started, the general attitude was that it, it kind of makes no sense for the Taliban to attack Americans now. Um, the U.S. is leaving uh, with its tail between its legs and in a very dishonorable fashion. Um, and the faster th that the Taliban can facilitate that movement, the better. Um, remember, the Taliban are, ta are, are patient. Like, these guys have waited decades, and they are very, very patient, so they can wait a couple more weeks um, before they, you know, uh, start their bloodshed throughout the country again. 
Um, but that patience is running out in a lot of areas. All right, so moving on to more Afghanistan-specific information. Uh, as I mentioned, the situation is rapidly deteriorating uh, with every day that goes by. Uh, some people might have noticed that the situation has kind of stabilized just a little bit with the addition of thousands of U.S. troops on the ground uh, at HKI, the airport there in Kabul. Um, but there are still tens of thousands of Americans stranded throughout the country. Uh, not just in Kabul, but in other places uh, throughout the country, which have completely and totally fallen to the Taliban. Really the only places uh, that right now that are not being held by the Taliban are the actual airport in Kabul and some more tribal regions up in the north where the Northern Alliance is. Uh, they've gotten started again, uh, so the boys are back in town when it comes to the uh, old Northern Alliance, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, when it comes to the airlift, uh, the evacuees have been, uh, the traditional process is that when the aircraft takes off, right, those pictures that we're seeing with all the Afghans on it that are uh, leaving Afghanistan, they're not coming directly to the United States. No, they're, they're going to uh, Qatar or Qatar, however you want to say it. Um, that's where they're being evacuated to uh, for uh, more in-processing. Well, there's only a certain amount of capacity there on U.S. bases, so uh, other U.S. bases are having to be opened up throughout the throughout the region to uh, house, house these, you know, thousands of people that were trying to get out. But, you know, space is, space is running out. Um, capacity is, uh, is filling up. And, um, yeah, so that's going to be a pressing issue over the next, uh, next few weeks at least. Uh, also is the rather uh, shameful reports we're seeing um, from U.S. forces uh, not being allowed or the United States as a whole is, is refusing to leave the wire. That's the, the kind of headlines that are getting out there. Uh, all of the other nations that are taking part in these airlifts out of Kabul, they are running rescue missions like ev like several an hour, right? They're running rescue missions 24-7 all over the city to get people out of safe houses and get people out of, out of harm's way and back to the airport to get out. Well, the United States is not doing that in uh, any significant numbers. Now, we do have uh, confirmation that a lot of um, secret squirrel stuff is going on. Um, and so we can't talk more about that, uh, so that we don't want to endanger any lives on the ground there, but, uh, suffice it to say, uh, pictures, uh, tell, tell a thousand words and videos even more so. And, uh, us forces, uh, have not been uh, utilized to their fullest potential, despite the fact that we have a lot of, uh, motivated, uh, young men on the ground there that are willing, uh, ready, willing, and able to go complete the mission. They are not being allowed to by their superior officers, which is, um, a lot of adjectives, but disappointing among the most. And then finally, we're also running into logistics issues. A lot of people have started raising the, the issue of where the aircraft getting re refueled at. This is the large, one of the largest air, airlifts uh, of modern history, and uh, these aircraft are thirsty, <laughs> and they're, they're not... Um, they're not having the, the fuel capacity. Now, when it comes to military logistics, this is being handled. So this is not a, a crisis at this point, I would say. Uh, however, uh, logistics always add a level of complexity to an already emergency situation. So that is yet another way that si this situation is deteriorating logistically. It's, it is a nightmare. And also, this airlift could take weeks. Uh, at the current rate, we, we can do the math, and we've looked at the satellite imagery, and we can count pretty well uh, here. And at the current rate, the, the airlift of not just uh, American citizens, but all the Afghans as well, it, say, it, say that we're only just going to take the people inside the airport, uh, that could take weeks uh, based on the number of aircraft we have and the number of uh, aircraft that other nations have contributed. Uh, that could take a very long time. So... This is uh, this is not uh, this is not something that is going to be solved overnight. This is a situation that is going to take weeks, uh, possibly at best, and that is not a, that is not including um, or considering any rescue missions that would require aircraft to fly around the country. Afghanistan is a pretty big country, um, and helicopters don't have the range to just fly from one side of it to the other. They've got to refuel somewhere. So there you go. You know, logistics again, very very important. So let's take a look at what's actually going on on the ground outside the airport right now as best we know it. Okay, so here's the situation on the ground in the vicinity of the airport uh, as best we know it. Uh, this is the general perimeter of Hamid Karzai International Airport, known colloquially as HKIA. Um, 
The northern part of the base or airport is uh, under military control. That's where the United States is setting up um, their stuff. And uh, to the south is the civilian side is under civilian control uh, traditionally. So normally when the Afghan war was going on, military dudes were on the north side, civilians were on the south side. It's kind of a crapshoot right now as to who's where, but most civilians that are inside the airport perimeter are being held on the south side so that we can uh, more efficiently load them uh, on, via the uh, normal PAX terminals there. Uh, the main road into the airport is uh, conveniently called Airport Road, uh, and this leads to the main uh, entry control point, or ECP. Now, this is where you're seeing most of those videos come from. Uh, the, the video that's going around is kind of viral where the, the Taliban are firing into the crowd. That occurred right there. Um, a, a lot of the, the, the pictures and videos uh, coming off of, of American soldiers helping people over T-walls and things like that, that is there at that main ECP. Um, so yeah, that's where most of your content is coming from. If you're seeing a video, chances are it's from there. Uh, also, most Afghans are coordinated or, or, or at least stacked uh, along uh, airport road, uh, along the main stretch into that main ECP, and also along the road to the west as the road continues west around the airport. Uh, this is where a significant number of uh, Afghans are gathered. This is where we're seeing the, the videos of people climbing over T-walls. The wall there along that western portion is very tall, so it's hard for people to get over. Um, but yeah, it, it's still where a lot of people are, are gathered trying to get into the airport. All right, so moving on to friendly composition and disposition. So uh, we cannot and will not talk about the friendly disposition at this time for OPSEC reasons, but we can give a rundown of the current composition of friendly U.S. forces. So uh, right now we're seeing on the ground being confirmed by the U.S. government is the 1st Battalion, 8th Marines, uh, 2nd Battalion, 1st Marines, 1st Battalion of the 194th uh, Field Artillery, which is from the Iowa uh, Army National Guard, as well as elements from the 82nd Airborne, which are kind of scattered throughout theater at this point, as far as we know. Uh, also, there are other various units that are there. Um, we cannot confirm or deny that they're there. The U.S. government cannot confirm or deny that they're there, but we've got videos of these guys being there on the ground, so there you go. Uh, also left out from the slide are uh, various special forces teams from other like non-5i nations that are scattered scattered throughout the whole place. So it's just too many icons. There's just too many people on the ground there to kind of track them all. Um, and most of these guys are out in the city as well. So there you go. Now, as far as enemy disposition, uh, as one can probably guess by now, the entire city has fallen to uh, the Taliban. Um, who control virtually every part of the city, particularly among, along uh, major roads, uh, which are easier to traverse for with their you know, equipment that they've captured. So significant numbers of enemy forces throughout the entirety of the city uh, surrounding the airport on pretty much all sides. Uh, also, we're seeing significant amounts of Taliban activity, roving, uh, roving patrols of, of lightly armed, um, but still <laughs> decently heavily armed, considering most of the civilians are unarmed. Uh, arms of Taliban patrols along Airport Road uh, to the west there and, and also along the main stretch, uh, which are looking for any sort of uh, opportunity to take, I guess is the best way to put it for YouTube censorship, I guess. Uh, also, there are checkpoints that we have been able to confirm via social media videos. Um, we don't really know exactly where these are at, but we do know that one is at least uh, out in front of or across the street from the Interior Ministry, which has been taken over by the, the Taliban and is now serving as sort of a government building for them, for their, uh, for their government. Uh, so yeah, Taliban checkpoints, pop-up checkpoints, these things happen everywhere. It could be something as simple as just a dude... Um, stopping his vehicle in the middle of the road, and boom, he's now the checkpoint. So uh, as anybody who's been to Afghanistan knows, these, gu the, these dudes are really good at setting up checkpoints um, between uh, ANA checkpoints and, and in other places really, really quickly to extort citizens. They've been doing this for the past couple of decades, and they're really good at it. And uh, those skills are coming to fruition right now, uh, especially considering the ANA is nowhere to be seen. So that is the current situation uh, outside the airport. Um, now, looking at this image, if we were to shift the uh, focus a little bit to the south, uh, we're going to push south and, and show what's going on or sort of where things are at, just give people a, an understanding of where things are at in the city. Uh, the U.S. Embassy and the Green Zone are, or the former former Green Zone, are to the south. So if we look, if we shift the camera, the, the imagery down a little bit to the south, we can see there's the main ECP, there's that uh, main airport road there. Of course, Taliban has maintained maintains control over most of the city. 
And that's where the uh, the former U.S. embassy was located. It is now currently in Taliban hands, along with the presidential palace. Now, along with all of that, like these icons indicate, these icons are not specific to anything, but there are civilians everywhere. Uh, there are also American citizens everywhere uh, throughout the city. It's it's not a small city by any by any means, and it is very difficult to traverse this terrain with the Taliban at every corner and on every uh, every street. So there you go. That's a, that's a, about as good of a rundown as we can give in the short time that we have. And hopefully this was helpful uh, at knowing what is going on and where everything is at. Um, right now, um, it, the things are subject to change. Uh, we could put down each individual Taliban checkpoint that we know about, and honestly, it'll probably be gone or changed or moved or something like that. So this is a good, broad overview of a very specific and, and tactical level situation. So moving forward into what people can do about this. If you are looking at this uh, like we are here in the United States and you are feeling a lot of things about what's going on, uh, just know that you're not alone. Uh, the situation is very tough, tough to watch, tough for a lot of people, people who have been there, people who haven't been there, uh, people who are concerned about um, the state of humanity are, are, are very upset about this right now, and uh, rightfully so. But but we can do something about it. Um, so if you're looking for ways to help or, or things that you can do to help with this, unfortunately, there's not very much you can do, but you can absolutely call your representatives. I know this is going to turn a lot of people off because a lot of people dislike their politicians right now, um, but phone calls in America are practically free, and uh, it doesn't take a lot of time to get through to your local representative and at least leave a voicemail that some staffer or unpaid intern has to listen to and catalog. Um, that can at least maybe do something, and it, it's very helpful. Um, oh, always make, make sure to, of course, you know, be as, as uh, calm and collect as you can be. Um, the messages for representatives that are just shouting into a voicemail box don't tend to really get anywhere, and uh, you, you tend to get on a list anyway. So um, if, you, if you feel uh, called to do something, uh, you can at least call your representatives, and maybe, just maybe, enough pressure will, uh, will force some action on the United States. Uh, political leadership, maybe. It's a long shot, but hey, it's, it's, worth some, it's, worth, it's better than doing nothing at this point. Also, uh, if you happen to see any photographs or, or stories of uh, family members or, or, or people that are stuck on the ground that are trying to share their story to get out of the country, um, please, uh, unless you have specific knowledge and are weighing the, the costs and, and the, the, the benefits of, this, uh, of doing something like this, please refrain from showing the faces or, or retweeting or reblogging or, or sharing uh, the faces of, of any locals uh, that might still be trapped there, that might be targets for the Taliban. Uh, we do have confirmed reports that the Taliban are watching social media like this, and they are hunting these people down already. So this is happening. Um, it might not be happening on a widespread scale just yet, but just give it time. Uh, remember, if you put something on the internet, it will be there forever. Uh, the internet is forever, and um, that's something to consider, especially if uh, it, you, you might be trying to do some good, but you might end up uh, hurting someone in the process. So please consider that uh, moving forward as, as we go forward into this. And uh, third, if you feel so so called to do so, charity is, is um, uh, another option. Uh, there are a lot of... Um, not genuine charities out there that will certainly try to exploit the situation. So please be careful if you choose to go and, and contribute um, to a charitable organization that tries to help the situation out, either helping refugees or helping Afghans or helping interpreters or even helping U.S. citizens that are stranded there. Um, there are a million charities for each of those. So just please be mindful of the ones you choose, and please, uh, please be aware that there are some uh, there are some sharks out there that are trying to take advantage of this situation to make a quick dollar. So please be mindful of that. But that could also be an option if you if you are or know of a, a charity that is honorable um, and is is doing good work. So that's another option as well. And fourth, I know it, it's hard to hear these days, but um, and it doesn't sound like much, but uh, being kind to another human being um, really does go a long way, um, especially in the world today. Um, 
there are a lot of bad things happening, and uh, just being kind to someone else is a uh, is a good way to make sure that we've got good things still happening, at least on some level. So that could be very helpful as well. And if you or anyone that you know uh, personally is in need of help, uh, here is some contact information that can help you. Uh, if you have di you have different options based on your status, so American citizens obviously. Um, have have higher priority for U.S. government uh, flights. Um, so there are a few things you can do if you're an American citizen. There's always a STEP program that is absolutely uh, a great thing. Uh, granted, yes, it has become very much aware that the United States government is not willing to help its own citizens uh, in Afghanistan at this time. Uh, but the STEP program will at least put your name in their database that says you are there. And they're going to have to answer for why they didn't get you at some point in time. Uh, also, following the, the uh, U.S. Embassy in Kabul on their uh, social media and also the State Department on social media helps as well. They're pushing out a lot of updates um, via, via the Internet. And a lot of times, uh, if the Internet is hard to load in Afghanistan, the, the Internet is garbage there. Right? Like, we all know this. Uh, you might not be able to load a full website page, but you probably could load Twitter, right? So uh, that could be very helpful as well. Also, also make sure, please, to follow the other uh, nations, the United Kingdom, France, and Germany. Those embassies are helpful as well. Um, we have confirmed reports that the United Kingdom, France, and Germany are out in the city, and they are... Uh, they're putting in work and they're getting stuff done and they are picking up uh, as far as we know this might not continue but we have reports that they are picking up people whoever they can um, it doesn't matter if you are a citizen of their nations um, despite what the United States is doing right now the, uh, you, you might actually have a good shot if the United States can't get you out the United Kingdom might be able to get you out if you are an American of course no guarantees but hey at least we know that they're doing uh, they're doing some good work uh, number four, kind of obvious, and get to the airport as quickly as you can, as, as fast as you can. Uh, avoid the main roads. Don't travel alone. Uh, we're seeing uh, the Taliban along that main airport road uh, extorting citizens and, and even murdering people left and right, despite what the uh, Western media is telling you. Uh, the videos on social media that they cannot censor are, uh, are proving otherwise. And there at the bottom of that column are some contact information uh, we'll, uh, we'll put this information also in the description box below if it helps. Uh, also, if you, or chances are if you're Afghan, you're probably not watching this video, but if you know someone who is an Afghan and they're having a hard time, uh, they have two options really that we know of. The special immigrant visa, the SIV process. This is something that has been a broken process for many, many years now, but there's the website for the paperwork. And also, if you're not eligible for the SIV process, you can apply for a P2 visa. Uh, and there's the website for that paperwork as well. Uh, that website is affiliated with the U.S. Department of State, even though it's a .org website. So there you go. I'm afraid we're, we can't help um, but so much. But hopefully this has been at least somewhat helpful for, for those that are trapped uh, in a very bad situation. So, yeah, hopefully this was helpful for everyone. Uh, please... Uh, please keep Afghanistan in your thoughts um, and moving forward. And if even if you cannot do anything about the situation, the best you can do is remember. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, there's there's a lot of bad stuff going on. Uh, there, there's no doubt about that. Um, and it, we can rewrite the history books. Um, the the powers that be can uh, can change that 24-hour news cycle to be something else. And, you know, we can go on and, and eat ice cream another day, right? But uh, some of us are never going to forget. And that's sometimes that's all you can do. So uh, years from now, when everyone else has forgotten about what's happening right now, um, we can remember. And sometimes that's enough. So let's not forget what's happening here. Let's do what we can, and uh, let's continue moving forward as best we can uh, through these tough times. So thanks for watching, everyone. Hopefully this was helpful, and we'll see you next time. And always remember to fight in the shade.